Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another film and 2022, my first film of the year. So happy new year to you all. So this morning, I almost fell foul, let's put that tripod down, of my number one rule, which is not to panic when it comes to going out and taking photographs just because you haven't got a plan. Um, last night, I was trying to come up with an idea for today and failed miserably. Set my alarm at five o'clock to get up and with, with a view to possibly traveling um, any sort of distance really within a couple of hours of home. But um, 5 a.m. went off. Uh, I then lied there at 6 a.m. I was still there at 7 a.m. And then finally 8 a.m. I dragged myself out of bed and, uh, and here I am. And I think it's, it's on days like that um, that we need to really be easy on ourselves and I think we can all relate to that situation that I was in this morning. It's not something I get very often I must admit but uh, today was one of those days. So you've just got to come out and remember why you do photography in the first place and it's to immerse yourself in the great outdoors and once you get out um, no matter what the weather I always find um, I'm always happier than I am lying in bed tossing and turning worrying about what I'm going to shoot for the day. So as usual, no plan, and um, we'll see what we can find. Okay, so I've got in the middle of quite a dense part of the woodland. The sun's coming out, it's actually quite nice right now, but it's been pretty dull up to this point. And this is something that I'm sure you're all so familiar with. Just lots and lots of clutter. And I, I have found something, but I've not investigated it further. But what I did was I came to this spot and I did the scan like we all do. and. Um, I had that little bit of doubt that crept in my mind as to thinking, could there be anything here? Is there anything here? Um, am I wasting my time? And it's so easy to just get into that mindset, to let, it, let the rock creep in. So what I was going to do before I spotted something, like I said, that I haven't looked at yet, so I don't even know whether it's going to work. But what I was going to do, I was just going to down everything exactly where I had that little bit of doubt and give myself a radius. And um, I was going to use... There's an oak tree there, a fairly thick oak tree. Um, that was going to be one of my points. And a similar radius, there's a fallen log just, just over there. And um, a similar circuit. And um, there's a bit of a pond. Well, I'll say a pond. It's a bit of a, a flooded area just here. And I was going to give myself that, that radius. And it, it was just because, as I've said so many times, when you're walking, you've got your blinkers on and you miss things. And, and sometimes you've just got to stop and uh, take your bag off and, and commit to a little area. And that is the beauty, uh, I suppose, of, of using um, smaller scenes, is that you, you can do that, you can find something more often than not if you try hard enough. Unlike the bigger woodland landscapes that I really love, if you have something like this always available to you, then chances are you're gonna go home with something that you're quite pleased with. So I'm gonna do that now. Uh, I'm going to check out the other little thing that I saw and, uh, and maybe we'll start with that. I think it's going to work, so let's get on with that one first. Hopefully you can see that just to my left there. Fungus, now we all associate fungus or mushrooms, fungi, with the autumn period. Well this is an exception, one of the exceptions to the rule in that we generally get fungi in autumn time uh, only. That's not the case, we do get them at other times of year and certain fungi this one being one of those species are actually frost resistant so they actually do their best 
um, at this time of year, sort of um, January and February time. This is called Velvet Shank. And the reason they call it Velvet Shank is because, um, in fact, let me show you that one there. Underneath, um, the actual stipe, or the stem as they call it, has got this lovely, beautiful, velvety texture. Um, quite brown chestnut colour by comparison to the golden coloured cap. So I'll get the camera out and get, uh, get it lined up. So I spent many a while trying to find the best position. As it, as it turned out, it's not the easiest um, arrangement to photograph. I've got problems with the background being quite cluttered. As I've already said, the woodland is very, very busy, lots going on. So I could, I've got to make sure that the depth of field that I use isn't so, so small that the background becomes distracting. And uh, I was really struggling with that. So. I, what I, what I did eventually was I sort of came slightly underneath and I've gone in really quite close and excluded all the background distractions and just gone for a very very intimate close-up of what is also already quite an intimate scene and um, just so that I can see these lovely stems and the caps now I've done a focus stack of well I've actually taken 10 um, different images focusing all the way through from the front cap here right through to the bases of the of the stems right where they where they meet the uh, the dead trunk and uh, I may or may not use all of those I used an aperture of f13 and I know that's quite a small aperture but because I'm so close um, fall off is 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 exaggerated by that greatly as we say depth of field um, decreases as magnification increases so by going in close f13 at this distance to the subject the background is going to be significantly softer than it would be if I was further back taking the whole group so um, yeah f13 is what I've gone for and um, exposure is a sixth of a second now the light is coming in from behind me to my left hand side there and it caused a problem by the time I got a uh, position that I liked I was getting sunlight and what I did, I have a white cloth, but I didn't use it in this instance. I felt that just by standing up and, and, and shielding um, the light from the caps uh, was sufficient to get what I wanted. So I'll put that on now. Right, so back to the original plan A. So my bag, as you can see, is still there and the, uh, and the velvet shank mushrooms just behind me. So the original plan was to photograph in the radius of the big oak tree, the fallen log and the flooded area and see what I can find in that small radius and really work in this area. Now, on this occasion, literally anything goes, no restrictions other than the radius. So uh, let's see what happens. So I have found a shot and uh, as I said I've made it nice and easy for myself. I did have the, the mind that if I did find something really complex and different that I would obviously I'd shoot it but I wanted to make the challenge nice and easy just to prove that if you look hard enough you'll always find something wherever you are. And um, when I was having that search I found just on the ground, I've shown you these before, evidence of mammal foraging one there. There's another one just here, there we go, and just another one just at the back. I'll show you in closely on this one. In this instance we've got deer foraging, probably roe deer, in this neck of the woods. And uh, they've been foraging and digging, you can see the hoof prints here. One particular good one just there, 
where they've been uh, moving the earth looking for fresh new growth and when you look around the forest uh, the woodland floor there's no evidence uh, of springtime but uh, obviously clearly underneath the leaf litter where it's a lot warmer the new growth is already showing and in this instance it's actually bluebells that they're, that they're digging up but um, back to my shot so I always do this whenever I root around I tend to carry something that I can place on the floor and in this instance I've put my, there it is, my case water bottle just exactly where I wanted to photograph. Like I say, I've made it nice and easy for myself, so I'll show you the composition now. So we're all set up, ready to go. I've got the camera uh, vertically over the top of the composition, so the centre plane, as discussed in previous videos, is nice and parallel to the woodland floor. I've got a 100mm macro on, and in terms of settings, I'm on F16, 100 ISO, and an eighth of a second. I will just quickly show you the composition. So I think it's pretty obvious which leaf I have focused on and it's this one here which is an upturned goat willow leaf. It's really beautiful and in contrast to all the other leaves. It's got lovely veins on the back of it and it's surrounded by mostly sycamore leaves that form this lovely brown and chestnut tones all around the main focal point. I'm going to have to be quick because this leaf here when the wind blows, which it did a minute ago, is actually moving. But um, I'll show you the framing and then I'll show you the image on screen. So the framing, as you can see, the goat willow leaf, the star of the show, is nicely placed on the diagonal and all those tones, as I've just said, really come together to make it stand out. All the other leaves are not shown in their entirety, they're all clipped so that your attention is focused on that one leaf and your mind is not, not, not tempted to, to look anywhere else. So I'll put that image on now. So trying something a little bit a little bit experimental here. Um, I've seen this sort of shot done before, um, never actually attempted it myself, and it seemed to make complete sense to use this um, water, this, this area of flooded woodland as my part of my boundary circumference um, to take my next shot. And it, basically what I've got, I've kept the same lens on 100 mm macro, and uh, I'm focusing on the reflected birches um, in, on the water surface so I'm not focusing through. I haven't got a polarizer on because I want to capture the detail of the trees and not what's below the water surface. I've selected an area of the tree canopy where I've not got anything too particularly heavy and I've got a nice arrangement and spacing of the, of the vertical trunks. You can just hear the background. It's a buzzard calling overhead to its mate. You can hear the mate further over in the distance circling the woodland. So in terms of settings I have got f8 and I've got 800 ISO and I'm getting a shutter speed of a 30th of a second. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for the wind to blow, hopefully it does, and uh, the moment the wind blows what it does is it, it makes the trunks shimmer and I need to freeze that, that motion so I've got to pick a point when the water surface is rippling enough to just create um, the effect I want to get um, but not too much so there's a critical point at which which I can get this but I'm going to try at 30 of a second and just try when the wind's blowing at various points so I'll put that image on now <laughs>
it seems the sun has come out for the end of the film. I will put all of those uh, three images on in just a second. But um, the point of today's video was to show that you can just make life much easier for yourself by not looking for specific things in specific light and just reacting to whatever you find. Now I didn't exactly make it that easy on myself, the fact that I constrained my working area to a small space. I just measured it out from the, um, from the fallen trunk to the, to the water course, the, the flooded part of the woodland there, and it was 24 metres in diameter, so quite a small space, but it just goes to show that if you look hard enough, images really are everywhere, you don't have to walk miles. So I am going to leave it there, like I say, images to come. If you've enjoyed today's video and you've liked what you've seen and you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe, leave some comments below, let me know what you think of today's images, and. Uh, whether you'd like to try something similar or even if you've already done that. Um, a thumbs up is always good for the channel and if you really want to support the channel and help it grow and um, provide new opportunities in the future there's a join button and you can join on YouTube and you can also join over on Patreon and memberships start from as little as 99p a month. So until next time I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.